Hey everybody, CVH here, and in today's video we're going to be playing a bit of mid-range scout on the ladder. Uh, it's always fun to play a mid-range scout, it's one of the more aggressive decks that you can be playing in the scout class, uh, especially in metas where people are always, you know, all about the ram scout, thinking it's one of the most powerful, if not the most oppressive deck on the ladder. So at the very least, we should be able to take a couple opponents off guard. But I also have another motive for playing this deck in today's video, and that is that this deck is Super Thanks 555's mid-range scout, uh, that's Super THX 555. Uh, we played in the first round of the TESL Champion Series tournament yesterday for the top ladder finishers of last month, and uh, this is the deck that did the most work against me. I was up 2-1, to one, and mid-range scout, this exact version, uh, was able to beat me twice when I was on uh, Control Mage and Merrick Battle Mage, and turns out he went on to win the entire thing. Now, I'm not sure how many of those games were down to mid-range scout. I wasn't watching all of the coverage. He wasn't even featured in every single round, uh, but obviously, but um, I have to imagine this deck performed pretty well for him in the games he was able to play it, because, uh, well, it did a lot of work against me, and he won the entire tournament, out uh, of 32 competitors, so I decided, you know, this is only one of the four decks he brought, but, you know, due to his high placements and the fact that the deck looked pretty cool against me, I'd give it a shot in the video today, because Midrange Scout is awesome, and I think it's in a much better position than a lot of people seem to think it is currently. Uh, and he was also playing some really cool inclusions. Uh, I will miss my Dark Guardians, but he's going for Haunting Spirit in this version, uh, even more heavy into agility than I was for the 38 cards for Nimble Ally right there. Deshaun Avengers is a sticky threat against control decks like Control Mage. I believe this was one of the more annoying cards against me. Sightless Skulks for a bit of card draw alongside the Shadow Shifts. And Snowy Saber Cat, probably the most interesting uh, card in this deck. Uh, he's not going super high curve with Red Brahmins or anything, but Snowy Saber Cat does threaten to pack it quite the punch. Uh, it has a really high toughness, so it's not going to be easy to remove, and we could potentially even buff it with Haunting Spirit. So that's the list. Uh, besides that, it's pretty straightforward, aggressive, threatening cards. You guys know the deal, but if you guys enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like, stay subscribed to the channel for more videos, uh, follow my stream in the description, and I'll see you guys next time. Here's some mid-range scout on the ladder. As an assassin, we don't have the ring, just gonna full ship all these and try to find some twos. We definitely found some twos. He only shipped a card. Jeez, open with double curse? That's horrible. Against Assassin, if he's more aggressive, I guess we could maybe make some use out of these, but <laughs> much rather be drawing them with Goblin Skulk. Not lucky. It's like drawing patches twice. Alright. Patches with value. Sorry, that's a Hearthstone reference, guys. Alright, well, I want, I want the field lane. I do. Of course I'm on your side. Aha! No Firebolt kill for you. That is an aggressively statted card. Kind of annoying. Uh, but we can just go face and drop the Brotherhood Slayer down. If you want to contest the 2-1. We could also curse that into a 3-1. If I do that, I might just go ahead and play another trader. It's kind of risky, right? Kind of risky. If he does have an answer. Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Save my curse. Play double two drop next turn, mute my opponent, you know, the usual. The flicker off the top. Sheer point dragon. I mean, it's not bad. I can play double two here, and I think I have to. I can play them both on the right. I'd rather draw the last curse. If I play the traitor in the right, he's kind of forced to curse it. Or have a lightning bolt. It's nothing personal. That might prevent this from getting cursed, so I kind of like this more. Of course I'm on your side. At least it makes him uh, think a bit with this curse that he's getting off the shaman. If he has lightning bolt, as well as the curse, that could be a problem. Or not so much a problem, but just kind of annoying. We, stu we still do have the sheer point next turn with the contract. There's the curse. Of course I'm on your side. Hmm. 
Alright, so I think we're going to go ahead and attack over this. I'm not going to give him a card here. A lot of swingy prophecies I don't want to see this turn. And I'm just going to use the Contract, Sheer Point, and Curse to take care of the Traitor. And since we saw him use the Murkwater Shaman's Curse, I'm going to hope that this 2-1 blocks the Goblin Skulk. Bone Colossus one turn away, and that's definitely good. Uh, let's go face for a bit. Start with the thing we don't want to get lightning bolted. In this case, it might be right to start with this, though. If this gets lightning bolted, it's not even that bad. Yeah, in this case. Now my inclination is to develop everything in the left, so... Yep, he did clear up a bit. But, uh... I'm gonna take over the field lane, he's gonna be clearing over some of these next turn. So we might even have a clear board to play Bone Colossus in the shadow lane. And hopefully that can apply the final bit of pressure we need. Fair enough, still definitely going for Bone Colossus. It's a cool animation, but it takes a while. <laughs> I think we're happy to see that. We were worried about things like Curse Leaf Lurker on the Bone Colossus, but it looks like we're gonna be able to push a good amount of damage. Hey, there's a Leaf Lurker. It's actually not that bad. I still have one curse left in the deck. <clears throat> so, we could double trade into that. And then Leaf Lurker in the left. I think that's fine. We're not like going for Leaf Lurker anything right now. Double trade using two skeletons, like half the Bone Colossus to take care of that in the Tome. It's very nice. Uh, face. Face. Hit something else. Does let him double trade into my Bone Colossus. Just gonna have to be okay. I'm gonna play both of these lefts. It means the Skulk is a bit weak to another Cliff Racer, but if he doesn't have to clear that, or if he doesn't have to clear using the Black Sap for some reason, I don't want my Skulk to be blocked. I also like playing the Skulk here just to uh, draw the third curse for one, and also to give myself the ability to Sightless Skulk to start next turn. Forest is my strength and my courage. Yeah. Of course I'm on your side. So it's chosen to not kill the actual bone colossus itself. Let's start with the draw. Yeah, the awkward thing is I can't search for the curse first because I'd have to sacrifice Leaf Lurker and then I can't actually draw a card. Hopefully we don't draw that curse. Okay, good. Yeah, you know, I think the simplest line is probably the best here. We trade over that, trade evenly, search for that last curse, use the curse on the 3-1, I guess, obviously. And uh, then just play Spell Sword and Haunting Spirit. Now, we could play it in the right, just in case we need to start contesting stuff, but I'm going to play him in the left so I can get a more consistent proc on the Haunting Spirit's effect. If we attack with the Haunting Spirit, then sacrifice it in the full lane to buff something else up for that extra bit of damage. 75% of the time, obviously. Um, that is actually how I lost game 1 against Super Thanks in that tournament. Sacked the Haunting Spirit for Crown Quartermaster to get a dagger, and if it buffed anything else, it was guaranteed lethal. Just didn't happen. Atromancer on turn 9. What is this? What it should be is lethal in our favor. Didn't see this coming, eh? It's 
So bypassing the last, last rune is not relevant here, uh, because there is no way for a Lightning Bolt to actually stop our push. However, uh, we can get him to 6 and attempt 2 anyway. All we'd have to do is sacrifice this for Cliff Racer, and uh... Hey, let's give it a shot. Keep him at 6, sacrifice this, hopefully one of these gets buffed. Ah, uh, it's the 5 attack that gets buffed, well that's not fun. It's okay, because there's no way a Harpy or a Lightning Bolt stops me anyway, but it was nice to try, right? Try to give him the no cards there. If it were relevant, if we were at 4 or something. Alright, so here I'll be shipping everything even with the ring. I think we've really won our twos. <laughs> Accidentally roping my opponent on the mulligan there. I'll scout ahead. Looks like we do have a ramp scout, I would assume. Rather high a rather high ranked one at that. This should be the test. Let's go ahead and get a Thieves Guild going. We have both of our shadow shifts, it's not ideal. Goblin Skulk would have been the thing to play that turn. Could make the case for it next turn though. Can I try to play around Murkwater Witch a bit? If he does Murkwater Witch and try to kill with the Witch, at least it won't die immediately and I can Shadow Shift it away. I really don't want to draw those curses naturally. It paid off. I will be cursing the 1 2. At that point, though, I'm not sure whether or not I play Windkeep Spell Sword or Haunting Spirit. He can't play His Mage next turn. I think I just want to play Haunting Spirit, honestly. I think I can afford to use this last, uh, or the second to last ring charge here. Saving the last one, hopefully, for Bone Colossus. And the Shan Avenger should be strong enough next turn. He hasn't actually played any ramp yet. It's definitely good news. After assume, Thorn Hist Mage is quickly approaching. My scale is love a good fight. I will protect the Hist. Not the strongest play he could have had there. It is pretty easy to deal with. We could go ahead and trade the uh, the Sean Avenger and the 1-1 one, one into it. And I think that's okay. Let's go ahead and play uh, Nimble Ally and we keep Spell Sword at that point. My scales move in shadow. Ifra stands with me. I always fear. Come this dance with me. <laughs> I might have traded this in instead of this if we were up against Control Mage because of Ice Storm. So you would have uh, remained with the uh, the pre-popped Deshaun Avenger uh, to punish the Ice Storm and also had better stats on board, but I think this is also fine. Like, even against Ice Storm, this would be a great board regardless. Like, we're just so far ahead currently. And we have options, too. We could trade with that. Could cheer point down and trade favorably. Could just Bone Colossus next turn. And he hasn't ramped a single time. I mean, he hasn't played, like, horrible cards or anything, but he hasn't ramped, and that's definitely what he wants to be doing here. Be nice to develop Bone Colossus, but Sheer Point Dragon seems so good. But I think I'm still going to go with the Bone Colossus, honestly. Come dance with death. The forest is ours. Definitely a few reasonable plays that turn. But Bone Colossus is really hard for Scout to answer.
Well, if we shadow shifted and drew a cliff race, we could kill our opponent this turn. Is that actually true? That's not true. That'd be one off lethal. <laughs> not true at all. However, we can play Sabercat this turn, and I really want to. I think I'm going to go ahead and shadow shift this over and trade with the 4 4. Keep the 4-4 uh, four, four lethal alive. Get some attacks going. And uh, probably no Territorial Vipers in this build, but... I protect the cat anyway. Uh, again, that's like a really hard card for Scout to deal with. Like, all of these cards are just really hard for an opposing ramp Scout to deal with. actually don't seem to have lethal here. I could draw into it. I have to play Thieves Guild first because it could give me Cliff Racer. What have we here? It didn't, but it gave me another Bone Colossus, which buffs all of these up. So then I can trade 3 and 2. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Damn, one off again. Alright, whatever. It's got to be the best play at this point, right? Alright, I think he's dead. I don't want to speak too prematurely, but this doesn't seem like a situation any deck can really come back from. Uh, a good day to die. Nice, this deck is pretty fun. 